Let's get into today's episode of Why We Succeed. Getting getting past all of people's doubts and their limiting beliefs can be so challenging because especially within the field of art because as you mentioned there's this negative connotation that it's a field that doesn't pay and I, I, I think the more accurate statement is it's a field that doesn't pay as many people as other fields do but it does pay you know like if like you said earlier if you're willing to put in the work then it will pay off it will become profitable it will become lucrative and it's just that so few people, it seems, are able to do that, you know, able to put in that amount of work. And if I'm being honest, I think a lot of it goes to what you just mentioned is the fact that you have so many people who've never seen it done, so many people who doubt that it's possible that they cause people to give up along their journey. And who knows what that person would have been able to accomplish. You know, yeah. I can't help but think of myself. I remember I used to love drawing when I grew up. Mm-hmm. But I took one art class, and that's the sad thing about it is it only took one art class and one teacher with a negative perspective to get me to say, oh, man, this isn't for me. And, you know, like, I just stopped. And, you know, I always look back and be like, man, what would have happened if I would have stuck with it? If yeah. I would have taken some classes, gotten around other people who enjoy drawing as well, and, you know, built that community, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, when you mention the community, I think it's also something important that I got to realize now mm-hmm. a few years ago. It's that when you start out, I think that most of us have that uh, false image of either you're totally broke or either you're totally famous. Right. Like, <laughs> just living between. <laughs> right. And, um, I got into the industry I because... When I started out, I really thought like, okay, I really need to be like those artists who make only a living with Patreon and their online shop or which have like 100,000 fans on on Instagram. And yeah, just to tell the, to be honest, I've been stuck at more or less 1,000 followers on Instagram for the last uh, three years. Like, mm. uh, I don't care because <laughs> I, I still get the money in right. <laughs> able to do my job. And uh, that's really something that uh, lots of newer artists might mm. not realize is that you don't necessarily need to have all that social proof outside mm. um, in order to make it. I've come to realize that there were lots of artists that I, that I met at conventions who didn't even have a website. <laughs> and uh, there's really that guy, which when I started out here in Luxembourg, I really respected him. And I thought, okay, he's the youngest comic artist after me. Like, And uh, and when I got to know him, I realized that he talks at Facebook and Instagram. He doesn't even have a website, but clients still find him. And it, it's right. not to be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really respect him, but just to say that you can make it without all the fluff all around. And I think what really counts is that you get your bills paid, you get your clients happy, and uh, then you'll be able to make a living. But the, the thing is that most people don't see us. Like, it's definitely possible to work only, for instance, with local clients. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but the people on social media won't necessarily uh, know it. And then I think there's lots of younger artists who come and then they only see like the people who are really active on social media and to post like all your things. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, social media can really distort our perception of reality. (laughs) And, you know, it can give us a a, a false sense of how things are either really done in real life or what's possible for people to accomplish. And if we continue to measure things by follower numbers, it will lead people to think that, oh man, unless I have X amount of followers, I can't expect to earn X amount of dollars in this case. And Mm -hmm. as you mentioned, that's not always true. It's really about what are you doing outside of social media? What are you doing, you know, outside of when people are tuning in and watching or viewing or looking at your life? And that's really key. Now, I want to go back to uh, one thing. Maybe there are some people out there who are not familiar with what manga is. Can you explain to them (laughs) what it is? (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, basically, manga means uh, comic in Japanese. And it's actually like those Japanese comics in black and white, which you read from right to left and from Mm -hmm. the back to the front. So, yeah, basically, it's just uh, like the Japanese comics. 
Nice. And and I appreciate you for explaining that because some people are like, what's what's manga? Well, <laughs> like, you know, let, let's let's help them out so that they know exactly what it is. But and, like just think of Pokemon, like I think everyone sees that style. So mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious, when you hear the word success, how do you define it for yourself personally? Well, if I go to the totally dreamy version, then success for me is having a big house, like owning, not renting, where I have an entire floor where I can just, where I have my atelier and where I can draw and have all my stuff. Yeah, so so that's the totally dreamy version. And (laughs) I will get it someday, but (laughs) I don't know when, but I will. (laughs) Um, but if I'm more, yeah, more serious and more down to earth, then I think that your your definition of success can be so different and not necessarily come down to like the material things that people traditionally are associated with. Mm-hmm. I've come to realize uh, lately that actually success for me was just being able to have enough work to be able to pay my bills and mm-hmm. to make a decent living at the end of the month and mm-hmm. still have some time to work on my personal projects. Like I have the, the paid projects for clients where I'm, yeah, where I'm working for clients. And then mm-hmm. I have my other projects like my upcoming manga or my fashion line where I actually work on my free time and don't necessarily necessarily earn money while I'm in the process of designing the things. Mm-hmm. And to me, I realized that, yeah, success was just being able to, yeah, to pay my bills thanks to that other work and mm-hmm. still have the freedom actually to do what I still liked and believed in. Right. Now, I want to go back to something that you had mentioned earlier, and I think it kind of ties into this, which is when you mentioned earlier about the first book that you were able to publish, it seemed like it was something that you always knew would happen. Was it always something that you were like, yo, I'm going to make a business out of drawing, out of my illustrations, out of manga? Was that always what you envisioned? Well, the book, I think it it was really since I was a child, like I I think uh, I already wrote my my first stories in kindergarten. Wow. <laughs> it was really the thing that I just wanted to get that book out. Yes. And uh, just to to give an example, like the first book I published, I think that I had written and drawn like over 50 different versions wow. over that whole time. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that if you put in so much work, then it's bound to happen because uh, I really had no life <laughs> except <laughs> putting that book out. <laughs> but actually, I didn't know that I wanted to make a living with art because mm-hmm. I still had that idea that art isn't a sustainable job and mm-hmm. manga even less. Uh, so when I was uh, done with high school, like the, the last two years of high school, I was already earning money and I had my courses and I was selling books. But I decided to stop everything and mm. to become a super cool manager. <laughs> 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 because like my other dream was always running a business and have a tailor-made costumes and mm. running in high heels. So that was the other dream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because everyone... Because, like, in my head, uh, I didn't know how to make art a sustainable living. Mm. I really started to sell my art stuff because I decided, okay, high school is over, now I'm getting serious, and I'm I'm doing something else. Right. But So I, I think it wasn't really, like, the life goal of me saying, okay, I really want to do this because... Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to do. And uh, what really helped me was doing a gap year and uh, realizing that being a school teacher actually wasn't my dream. <laughs> <laughs> then I got this opportunity of someone introducing me to conventions and saying, hey, we have a booth at a local fair and do, do you want to sell your book with us? And I was like, wait, okay, those old books that make me cringe? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, over the, the six months, I think, mm-hmm. I totally got into it again to create a whole new book. Wow. And then that's how I started. And that's really the, that was really the turning point. Like, I think I was mm-hmm. 18. 
And uh, that was really the turning point where I was at a convention with people I had never seen before. And mm -hmm. she suddenly told me, oh, wow, that's cool. And we really like what you do. And uh, then I got invited to the next conventions and wow. I met other clients and a publisher. And that's really how things continued and where wow. I really saw the opportunities from within the industry. Because before mm -hmm. uh, it was like, okay, I'm just doing what I like and then we'll see what will work. And mm -hmm. here it was really, okay, I got to see other artists who could uh, give me advice. Uh, mm -hmm. I could really see that there were people who were interested, that there was a potential for clients. So that's really what changed once I really got into the real industry. Hello, I'm Sabrina Kaufman and I'm a manga illustrator from Luxembourg. So if you like manga, pretty girls and fashion, then you can find me on my website on sabrinakaufman.com. Or if you're an aspiring artist, then you can also find me on myartbizacademia.com where I share lots of artist tips and YouTube videos about how to go from art to business.